My name is Vanessa Johnson, board chair for the National Women in AIDS Collective, or NWAC. And NWAC is a collection of organizations that are led by women who serve women who are living with HIV. So I'm happy to be able to do this with you today. What do you see as the biggest change in treatment for persons living with HIV AIDS in the last few years? Probably one of the biggest changes is the reduction of the amount of pills that one who's living with HIV AIDS and is on treatment has to take. Uh, I just give, use my story as a personal example. Uh, in 1990, I was diagnosed with HIV and started taking medications in 1995. And at that point in time, I probably was taking on average of 15 to 20 pills a day, maybe two to three times a day. Uh, more recently, I'm taking a regimen that involves four pills a day, and I only take that once a day. And in other situations, my other colleagues and friends that I know who are living with HIV AIDS are only taking one pill a day. That is a miracle, because at one point in time, I think that most people were really struggling with adherence because the prospects of having to take a handful of pills every day is not a joy. I think the, uh, the technology around the medications has advanced considerably and I think it'll make everybody's life easier. I know it's made mine easier. Studies have shown that taking antiretroviral medications can prevent the virus from being transmitted to others without HIV. What does that mean for me? Prevention with treatment is a promising aspect of HIV research. Um, for me as a woman living with HIV AIDS, it's promising in the, in the aspect that um, in, during the course of my life, I may be able to resume normal sexual activity. I say that because many people living with HIV AIDS are already engaged in sexual activity. Uh, obvious, that's obvious because of the transmission rate in the United States. However, th knowing that if I'm adherent to my medications, I may reduce the risk of transmitting this virus to another human being um, makes me hopeful. It's also going to make me more likely to want to take my medications on a regular basis. So I think the results of HTPN 052 are promising for many reasons. Not many states in the United States have HIV criminalization laws. And if the science shows that if we're adherent and undetectable, that the virus is not likely to be transmitted, then there really is no need for these laws. There are several promising aspects. One is that it's just more evidence of the fact that we're going to live longer with this disease, as well as be able to be able to live with it on our own terms, not be subjected to the whims of how this disease could potentially impact people. I think it's, it's lessening the symptoms, it's lessening the impact. You know, folks are saying it's a chronic disease. It, I think it could truly be called a chronic disease once we're able to show that if you're undetectable, you cannot transmit it. Um, one of the other points I wanted to make is that it is truly promising in the sense that unlike other sexually transmitted diseases, because I'm going to talk about HIV in the context of being a sexually transmitted disease right now. Unlike other sexually transmitted diseases or sexually transmitted infections, this is a groundbreaker in the sense that it can actually prevent the transmission of infection. Whereas the other sexually transmitted diseases, medication is more or less to treat. It doesn't prevent the transmission. So in that sense, this is a groundbreaking discovery. I've heard a lot about PrEP recently. What do we know about this new strategy to prevent HIV? I think PrEP is a fascinating development. It's fascinating in the sense that for the first time probably in my life, uh, hmm, it's promising because I've been living with HIV for over 20 years, and one of the things that I most uh, fear is someone else becoming infected, because that's a lifelong obligation. Uh, it's unlike being married. At least you can divorce. I cannot divorce HIV. <laughs> it's with me. That's just with me. So the fact that uh, there may have been there, there might be something 
that can prevent me from getting HIV is really a good thing. Or the people you love in your life. If you're living with HIV AIDS and you know what it's like to live with this disease, for those people in your life who are negative, you really want to follow the development of PrEP. Because if it truly works, it is something you're going to want to recommend to your loved ones. Um, they have been able to demonstrate in the PrEP trial for men who have sex with men, gay men, that it works. If the men are adherent to the medications on a daily basis. And so in that aspect, one has to really know themselves. I would not suggest you go out and run and get the medication because you don't want to become infected. Really sit down and think about this. Am I going to take this pill every day for the rest of my life? Because if you cannot make that commitment, and if you are not that disciplined to do that, then you will be adding to the chaos that's already out there surrounding PrEP. Regarding the trial for women, the results have not been that promising, and they've stopped that trial. That trial was for females who are negative. And I guess I should have said that about the, the men's trial, that the men's trial was for uh, MSM gay men who are HIV negative. The female trial is for females who are HIV negative, and unfortunately that trial has been discontinued because they have not been able to show the same results as the trial for men. For women, uh, there was a difference uh, because of probably the incidence of HIV infection may have been higher than they wanted, wanted to see, and also some of the females that were participating in the study became pregnant which points to an issue of adherence. Um, and I would say that probably for the female participants, more investigation needs to be done about their daily lives. Um, I used to doubt the importance of adherence. You know, uh, I, I really did doubt the importance of adherence, but adherence is really important. It's a scary thing for a lot of people to know that you know, because a lot of people feel like it, it, the medication is controlling them rather than them being in control of the medication. That I have to open up this pill bottle every day and take medication is sometimes troubling to people, but it's so critical. I would not be here if I were not at least 90 to 95 percent adherent to my medications. I don't want to be every day. I truly don't. I don't like the fact that sometimes I have side effects that I have to contend with. I don't like the fact that they may be causing other disease conditions. But the bottom line is, and it was told to me point blank by a doctor, that if you don't take your medication, you will not survive this disease. So my intent is to survive. I want to live.